sanctions that were implemented two hours ago should have been done the first day of war. Mm -hmm. And I remember the promise of President Biden that if the Russian soldier steps on Ukrainian land, the response is going to be very strong. I've been here for 11 days, so I flew here the first day the war started because I realized I would be more helpful probably for my country here. I know that President Zelensky has been calling for a no-fly zone. How does imposing a no-fly zone over Ukraine not end in America or the West in direct combat with Russia? Well, my question is, what is the red line when you're going to go in the correct, in the direct combat with Russia? When he crosses the Polish border? Or when he ca kills, I don't know what, 10,000 people? You're not trying to offer any assurances that a no-fly zone would prevent direct combat between the West and Russia. What you're saying is the stakes are such that you need to move, yes. whatever the consequences are. We keep asking, you don't want to do the no-fly zone? Give us the chance. Can we have the same air defense system to protect our cities? We're talking about the military support now. If you don't want to do the political decision and step in, do at least the military support, and you cannot even do that. I'm not arguing in favor of the U.S. position, but defense officials will tell you the speed with which these, some of these weapons have been deployed, some of the defensive material is, you know, it's record time. It does take a few days. It takes a few weeks. It could take months, you know, and... How many people have to die? Uh, I'm not... What is I'm, the red line that needs to be crossed? I, I don't know. Is it going to be chemical weapons? I hear in your argument a frustration that the West doesn't feel like there's the political momentum to do more in Ukraine. What do you think changes that calculation? The only thing that politicians care about who take the decisions are the polls. And when they saw the polls that 74% of Americans support the no-fly zone and 80% of Americans support the embargo on oil and gas, they came out in two days and said, we are supportive. You have elections to Senate this year. So that's why everybody keeps looking at what people think. And thanks God people are more human than politicians. Because when people see that literally children and women are being executed and everybody's filming that and watching 24-7 on the TV channels but not doing anything to stop that, People are getting angry. What has it been like having those conversations with people who are still at home fighting this war? I feel guilt that I'm not there with them. And when I hear the stories, and you should understand, I'm from Kyiv, so a lot of my friends do not have apartments to come back to. They're totally destroyed. Some of them have already lost their husbands or their brothers. I had a friend of mine, he posted a picture of his sister. He flew from the United States to pick her up with kids. So she brought the kids to the Polish border and she said she was coming back to fight. Because they don't have a place to run, that's our home. I'm sorry. You have nothing to apologize for. If the West doesn't do anything, what happens in Ukraine? Does Putin take the entire country? We're definitely not going to go down. It's not happening. Uh, it will be a long war that is going to weaken Putin, make NATO stronger, and we would continue fighting for years, probably, I don't know, months, just to protect our independence and our freedom. Basically, you're painting a picture here where it's a long, bloody carnage. For the it looks like that, Ukraine. unfortunately. But you never give in to Putin governing Ukraine. No. He never annexes the country. No. He will have to literally burn it to ashes. <laughs> <laughs>